This is the fifth in a series documenting the do-it-yourself construction of a ground-mounted 17.4 kilowatt electric solar array. In this video, I'll review a methodology to determine the panel layout and to develop a plan for the supporting ground-mounted framework. Looking at this side-on view, there are only a few major components. There are the vertical support pipes, which hold up the horizontal pipes, which hold up the iron ridge aluminum rails, onto which the solar panels are clamped. In this design, all of this is connected together with various pieces of iron ridge connecting hardware. In the last video, we were setting vertical support pipes in concrete, so we better be confident at this point that we know what we're doing and that it's all going to come together well. And we are confident because we've thought about it a lot and we do have a plan. The first step in developing your plan is to contact your local power company and determine the maximum amount of inverter power you're allowed to connect to the grid. As soon as possible thereafter, you should select the inverter hardware you wish to purchase, then apply for and obtain an interconnection agreement with your power company. This agreement will state, if you build your array per code using the approved inverters which you selected, then the power company will allow you to connect to the grid and export up to 100% of the power you produce. You're going to need a building permit, or perhaps a zoning application, or some similar type of documentation depending on where you live, because the power company is going to want proof that the array was constructed per code and that it's safe to tie the equipment to the grid. When you contact your power company, they'll provide you with the application and the entire approval process. Due to higher than normal call volume, our expected callback time frame of 48 hours has been extended. We apologize for this inconvenience and will return your call as soon as possible. Please leave your name, address, telephone, and account number so we may better serve you. You may also email us at gpc-north at pepcoholdings.com. Thanks again for your patience and have a great day. Record your message after the tone. When you've finished, you can hang up or press 1 for more options. For this initial application with the power company, it's important to go big. Once you begin exporting power, should you later decide to increase your inverter capacity, any increase may be denied because you're no longer a net consumer of electricity and therefore not eligible for an increased net metering agreement. If you live in the United States, these limitations are a function of your state's regulations. On the other hand, if you oversize your inverter, there is no requirement to connect a commensurate number of solar panels. By obtaining a larger inverter approval and installing those inverters, you will have preserved the ability to expand your solar array in a time and manner of your choosing, regardless of your new power consumption profile or lack thereof. Once you've selected your inverter or inverters, a target number of panels should be chosen. Understand that the final number of panels may need to change as you hone in on a panel layout that's configured with the framework underneath. When choosing a target number of solar panels, consider that the rated power is under ideal full sun conditions. Real world production is going to be less. Also, solar panel efficiency decreases with age. Consider what your panel production will be in 10 years time and whether you want to compensate for that now. Another aspect to consider is that many inverters allow the total solar production to exceed the inverter's power specification by a certain percentage. In these circumstances, the inverter is de-optimizing the system by automatically moving the voltage current production point away from the MPP, effectively reducing the solar panel's efficiency in order to hold power production within a few watts of the inverter's label specification. This throws away a little bit of power during some parts of the sunniest days, but in exchange, it allows you to operate at your maximum permitted inverter power level for more hours of the day. 
For this design, the panels are mounted in a landscape orientation. My personal preference is to place the landscape oriented panels in columns, four high, with each column centered on two 14 foot long iron ridge mounting rails. Studying the photos of other similar projects, I saw that two inch vertical pipe supports were frequently spaced about 10 feet apart in the long direction. However, I felt comfortable spacing the pipes 12 and a half feet center to center, and I'm satisfied the design is both rigid and strong. I decided to shoot for an array containing 60 panels. Such an array would have 15 columns comprised of four landscape oriented panels in each column. If we plan to separate each panel by the width of, say, a thick paint stirring stick, we can now precisely calculate the total length of the array, 25.2 meters. If each pair of short and long vertical support pipes are spaced 12 and a half feet center to center, then seven pairs would seem to be the right number as they would span about 22.8 meters. This means the array surface will overhang the last support poles by about 1.2 meters. That's a 45 inch overhang on each end. So, now we have to decide if we're comfortable with a 45 inch cantilever on the ends. I think it looks good. Much better than no cantilever at all. And it's just an all around good idea because it lets you get in a few more panels for the hard work of putting in those footers and support posts but we do need to have a drawing so we can assure ourselves that it's going to be okay. Here's the drawing I created for my project. Along the bottom, it shows the seven pairs of support posts spaced 12 and a half feet center to center. On each end, the panels overhang the last pair of supports by 45 inches. Zooming in on the assembly of the end components, you can see that I chose to extend the horizontal pipe 32 inches beyond the vertical pipe. The outside rail, shown here as a small triangle, is placed 30 inches beyond the vertical pipe, nearly at the end of the horizontal pipe just inside the end cap. When the panels are mounted, the far edge of the solar panels is cantilevered 15 inches beyond the furthest rail for a total overhang of 45 inches. In retrospect, I've been completely satisfied with these dimensions. The cantilevered section continues to be both rigid and sound. So if your plan results in a cantilever significantly more or less than this, you might consider removing or adding an additional column of four panels to your overall design. Because you now have a plan, knowing where to begin placing the horizontal pipes is super easy. Just position your first horizontal pipe with it extending beyond the first vertical support in accordance with your plan. In my case, that was 32 inches. Continue assembling couplers and horizontal pipes toward the opposite side, but pause when you get to the final length of pipe. Variation in the thread of each pipe is going to cause the total length to vary, and the position of the last couplings may be slightly offset. At this point, take a measurement, cut, and re-thread the final lengths accordingly. Many of you may have noticed that I hop back and forth between the metric system of measurement and the godforsaken imperial system of measurement, and for this, I am truly sorry. When I was in the fifth grade, we were very excited about the United States transition to the metric system. But then President Ronald Reagan defunded the effort, abolished the U.S. metric board, and we all slid back to our comfortable miles per hour and degrees Fahrenheit, yards, feet, and inches, and the pound, which can mean either mass or force depending on how you say it. So. Do you think it's time the United States officially converts to the metric system? If you have a thought on the matter, leave it in the comments below. I'm sure we'd all like to know your opinion.